we'll open with two stories that are going to explain a lot of what that we're going through in life. There was a terror attack a few years ago in Eretz Israel. And a terrorist went into a bus full of people with a bomb on, on his body and exploded. And he killed a few people over there. There was a woman that died in that uh, bombing. And suddenly she saw herself, her soul started to see herself outside of her body. And she's floating in the air and she saw her body and other bodies and people are screaming. But she was already cut, divided from the situation. She wasn't part of it anymore. She, she was like a helium balloon. She was flying. Some other force was pulling her up. And she saw herself outside of the bus and she's flying and flying and, and, and she saw the streets and police and ambulance are coming. Yes. Okay, and she's, uh, she's good with it. She's flying now back home. But um, in a certain moment of her new journey back to heaven, she heard a certain tune, a music from the world, from down from the world, from earth. And it was an amazing music. And that music was making her so curious. She wanted to hear that music so badly that she put all of her powers to come back, to come down to the world again. And it was against all of her nature. And she had to put so much effort on doing that because she was flying high. And she went down back and she sees again the neighborhood and the smoke coming up from the bus and everything. And she, she hears the music getting stronger and stronger. And she's like swimming somehow, putting all of her powers into finding that source of music. And she's going to a certain street that was close by to the, to the bombing area. And there are a lot of vehicles, cars that are stuck in traffic because of the bombing and whatever happens over there. And she recognized the, the car, that from that car, the music, that amazing tune that she hears, she can't understand what she hears, just she feels so attracted. She got such strong desire to, to hear that music, to, 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 to meet with the source of that music. And she finds finally the car, that from that car, the music comes out. And she just jumped into the vehicle through the window, and she sees a woman, a religious woman, that sits and with tears, with tears, crying. That woman, in the moment that she heard that there was a bombing, she started crying and with tears, and she, she done whatever she could just to do something good with herself, and crying and crying. After she saw that it's a woman that reads tears, she suddenly woke up in her own body, outside of the bus, they already took her out from the bus, and she was a very hard condition, wounded, and went to hospital for a few months, three months if I'm not wrong, and she recovered, and she went out, she went to some psychiatrist, therapist, and she went and made um, hypnosis. She wanted to find out the number of the license, um, of the car, number of the car. She can find the woman. And, the, and, and that's what she done. And she went to, to some offices and, 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 uh, in, uh, in Israel, and she found out the details about who owns that car, and she went and she knocked on the door. And that woman opened the door, and she told her, can I come in, please? She told her, yeah, can I help you? What do you need? She said, can I have a cup of water? She couldn't talk. She went into the house, she let her sit in her living room, she gave him a cup of water, and she told her, you saved my life. The Tehillim that you said in that day of that horrible attack, it saved my life. We cannot understand what is the power of the mitzvot that God gave us. We don't understand what it means. They asked once, I don't know about those sizes, about those measures, but they asked Einstein, what is the highest thing that you know? What is the biggest thing that you know? So, uh, above the galaxy. So he said the next name of the, of the I don't know, I'm, I'm not a science man. But they told him, he said, so, and what is bigger than that? And he said, and what is bigger than that? And he said, and 
What is bigger than that? So I said, the way that from your house to the Bet Knesset is bigger than all of it. The simple schapsia, the reward that you have on every footstep that you walk in the direction to the Bet Knesset is higher than all of that. It's all imaginations of a physical world. But when you connect yourself to your inner soul, you understand that it's got a certain meaning. It means something. It's a different thing. The second story, I told that story a few times in my classes, but I know you're not watching YouTube and you're guarding your eyes. So. <laughs> What's what YouTube? Exactly. <laughs> so I'm going to tell you. There was a group of Christians, missionaries, that came to Eretz Israel to visit in the holy places in, in Israel. And they came to the Western Wall, and there was one woman between all of the women over there, that when they came to the women's section in the Western Wall, she started to cry. And she couldn't, couldn't hold herself back. She was crying and crying, and all of her friends hugging her, telling her, relax, what's happened? She cannot continue. She was crying and crying and crying, and she herself didn't know how to explain what it goes on with her. She washed her face, she drank water, she everything she done, nothing stops her from crying. And she almost lost her mind. And all of her trip in Eretz Israel was a disaster. She couldn't handle that destruction, what had happened to her, and she, she herself didn't understand, not anything. She just, she was there. It destroyed her, and she was just over there. And she went back home to the United States. She came to her mother's house and asked her, told her her story, and asked her, do you know something about it? Can you understand me? Can you understand what happened to me? Why Why did I was, why was I so broken over there? What happened to me? The mother, she didn't know anything. So she, with her weary thoughts, went to her grandmother's house and started asking her, and all of the family are Christians, they're all going to church every Sunday, happy, everything is good. And she came to her grandmother's house and she told her that story, and she sees suddenly that the grandmother was scared. Something happened to her when she heard that story. And she's coughing and went to the kitchen and told her, oh, this nonsense, and so she was aggressive and she, she <coughs> something happened with her. So she started pushing her and asking her, please tell me, forcing her, what happened? Please, what, what's going on? After a few minutes of, of very stressful moments, she convinced her grandmother to talk and she started to cry, exactly like that she was crying. And she asked her, why are you crying? Please tell me. So she told her, I was a girl in the horrible days of the Holocaust. And all of my family have been murdered, executed in front of my face. I saw my mother die, I saw my father die, my brothers, little brothers and sisters, everyone killed. And I made that oath, I was hiding, and a Christian family was hiding me. And I made an oath in that day that I will not going to tell no one that I'm Jewish. Because she was afraid that people were going to kill her. One day, who knows what's going to happen. So. She chose to be Christian, just to stay alive. So she is Jewish, actually, and her daughter is Jewish, and her granddaughter found out that she's Jewish without knowing that in front of the Western world. You don't need to know that you're Jewish, that the light of your soul is going to bring you to the truth. Like us. When I decided to do tshuva and to come back to God, I wasn't searching for God at all. God wasn't the thing that I was searching for. I was searching for myself. Where, where am I? Who am I? What's going on with me? I wanted to know the truth. I wanted to stop lying to myself. I felt bad with myself, with my old self, with who that I was. I wasn't happy to go all of the time and to pretend that I'm happy when I'm not. To wear clothes that's going to show that I'm rich, that I'm wealthy, that I'm successful, when I feel bad with myself, when I'm not happy to wear those clothes. To do things that people are going to like me. When I look at those people, I despise them. When I don't want to hang out with them at all. And I need to shake everyone's hands. And I was clubbing. And I was a doorman. And I was working in clubs. And I was doing crazy things. And, and, and I had a bike. And I had a jeep. And I'd and I done everything that a person can do. But I wasn't happy while I was doing it. 
And that point of truth that I felt bad with myself, I felt like I'm doing the wrong things. I'm, I'm walking in the, against myself, against my real happiness. It brought me to search. It woke me up to search for my inner truth and not to look for someone else's truth. Just when I was searching for the truth, I found it. Where I found it? I found it in the Bible. I found it in, in, with religious people. I found it. With, not, I cannot put my finger on one person and to tell you, I chose to be like him. I'm following him. No, there is no one like that, that I'm going to follow him forever. No. Maybe when Mashiach will come, we're all going to find ourselves inside of him. I don't know. But for now, I found myself. And that is exactly what that I was searching and we all know that we have something unique inside, something special, something individual that no one else has. And we need to find that source of life, your unique light, what that you received from heaven. That's your soul. And every one of us have a unique soul. And it's part of heaven. Chelek Eloka Mimal. It's part of the Creator that He planned inside of us. And we need to hold that part. We need to connect ourselves to that, to who that we are. To be a religious person, to go every day to the synagogue, to Bet Knesset, to Shul, to go to Bet Midrash, to sit, it doesn't make you to be a better person. Only if you want to become to be a better person, it's going to help you. There are people that are eating vegetables all day long. It doesn't make them healthy. They can be very sick and eating. But for sure, if you want to be healthy, it can help you. If you want to do good, to go to a good place, it's for sure going to help you. It's going to support you. But it's not going to change you. If you all of every day are going to go to the shore three times a day, go seven times a day. It's not going to change you. If a person is a liar, and he's a corrupt person, and he's evil, and he couldn't care less about honoring other people, and he doesn't care about the emotions of people, and he just wants to run over everyone and to, to climb on the backs of other people, no bad Knesset in the world is going to change his character. Only his inner will, only our will to work on our attributes, on our midot, and to become, to be a good people, good person, that's going to change us. And now, if in that path, in that way of us finding ourselves, it's hard for us to complete and to accomplish all of 613 obligations of the Torah Kedusha and all of the obligations of the Rabbanan, so it's okay. It's okay to take our time and to put the main focus that we have, all of our ability, to focus on finding our happiness, who that we are inside. Not a fake happiness, fancy house, fancy car, fancy, fancy jeans, I don't know, $700 jeans that, uh, you know, they, they torn your jeans now in a nice way, so now you're going to pay another $100 for that. It's craziness. That's what goes on today. Just because someone crazy <laughs> went with a Japanese knife on your pants, you're going to pay $100 on that. It's crazy. That's today. That's what goes on today. Why need to have a $5,000 watch to be happy? I helped Chaim sell his watch. He had a $5,000 watch. I helped him selling it. Ken. 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 Exactly. I helped him to get rid of that stupid watch. He felt like he lost a kidney. <laughs> <laughs> We feel attached to an imaginary world that cannot stand up for you, that cannot support you, that cannot build you, that cannot help you, that cannot save you, cannot redeem you, cannot build you, cannot give you anything. When you need help, that walk will not going to help you. That golden torch, that fancy cup will not going to help you. When you need a doctor, you need a doctor. The money will not protect you in Judgment Day. The honor, the respect, the, 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 it's not going to protect us. And we know it. And this is why God is bringing us to be close to good friends that are having the same way of thinking. And even though that it takes time, we're all on the same path. And we're all waking up. And slowly is better. Because slowly but surely. If you do something in a stable way that you think before you do, and you make another step, and you're not jumping, no, you know what? Today I heard that awesome uh, 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 lecture with Shi'ur. 
it's not going to last. Okay, so you're going to be from, you're going to be Haredi for three years, for three months, and, and then it's all going to fall. So only after three years you're going to look back and you're going to say, why did I marry her, and why am I doing this, and I lost my money, and I lost my hobbies, and I'm not swimming, and I'm not running, and I'm not biking, and I'm not surfing, and I... Oh, it's going to happen. So it's better to work on ourselves that the process of healing from the imaginary world that we're born into is going to be stable. That we're not going to lose our minds. That in the end we're going to achieve what that we were looking for. So it's better to do less and to do in a stable way, in a calm way. That every day you're going to be able to be thankful, to have, to have gratitude to the Creator on every good thing that you have. And not to lose your happiness. Rabbi Nachman of Breslev said, I can take your Yetzirah in one day. He can give one lecture that's going to cancel the power of free choice for you. To show you God in one lecture. He's able to do that. He can open his mouth and to blind you with the, with the light. And that's it. And, and you're going to follow him for sure. But he said, if I'm going to do that, there are going to be rivers of blood that are going to come out of your bodies and you're not going to hold on. You're not going to be able, because today... To take from you all of the meat, and all of the alcohol, and all of the Lashon empty conversations about empty things, and, and joking about stupid things, and television, and music, and fancy cars, and nice clothes. If we're really going to take it from you, you you're going to feel, okay, that's it. I, I don't have no reason to live anymore. You know, I'm enjoying, I was enjoying this state. I was enjoying this whiskey. I was enjoying that rap music. I was enjoying driving with my uh, 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 roof open uh, uh, in, uh, in Okay, great. That, that I felt happy. So it's better for you to drive like that with your imaginations and to throw another verse, another word to Hashem. Please Hashem, can you heal me? Please Hashem, can you help me? Please Hashem, can you build me? And one verse is going to join to the other, one prayer is going to join to the other, and together they're going to build you. That one day you're going to look at that car and it's not going to be so important like it used to be. That you're going to look at that amazing phone and it's not going to be so important like it used to be. And one day you're going to forget it. One day you're going to change the car. One day you're going to change the watch. All that you're going to be able to drive the same car and not to care so much about that car. Just to look for Hashem in Barach while you're driving. To think about Hashem while you're driving. It's inside our souls. And those souls are hidden inside of our bodies. And every one of us have that soul inside. And we just need to believe in that. First of all, to be aware, I have that soul. That is the power of my life. That is my good will to be kind, to be strong, to support, to help, to love, to care, to give charity, to give advice to people, to help people, even in the middle of the night, even when I'm that tired. My goodwill, that is my soul. Foreign thoughts, that is the Yetzirah of the person. That is the devil. Sadness and depression and anger and frustrations. Those are the crazy thoughts are bringing you to sadness. Those are foreign thoughts. Bringing you to despair, those are foreign thoughts. You need to fight with those. You need to argue with those. You need not to follow those. No, you're not allowed to quit that job. If you're going to quit that job, you won't have money. You won't be able to pay your rent. Don't listen to that. That's against faith. Faith tells you that God is with you always. And you can call Him always. People that listen to my advice, they dropped the job. And they were afraid for years. They were holding that job like it was their lifeline. And they dropped it. And in the same day, they found something else, something better. And even if you're not going to find it in the same day, it's going to take you a week. Maybe you're going to have a huge test. It's going to take you a month. A month. If you count on, on, on Hashem Barach when you took that decision, you will not going to be disappointed. Everyone that trusts Hashem, trusts the Creator, he sees Hashem face to face. Abutach Hashem chesed is Kindness is going to surround him. And you're going to see that kindness. If you're going to believe in Him, and you're going to give Him your hands, and you're going to close your eyes and make another step, no one needs to do anything radical. Just you need to do things that you can feel good and right and strong with yourself. You must be who that you are. You must choose life. 
You must choose life. You must be who that you are because God gave you that soul and you have to be loyal to God and you have to reveal that soul. Because you have things inside of yourself that no one else have, that God gave them only to you. And you have to use them. You have to use your talents, your wisdom, your life experience. Because we need you. Because the people need you. Because your brothers and sisters, they need you. They need you with your sense of humor. They need you with your wisdom. They need you with your talents. They need you to give them the right advice, how to make money, how to open a business, how to open a bank account, how to find your wife, how to do Shlombayt with her. They need you. If they're going to see a rabbi, it's going to be very hard for them to trust him. But if they're going to see you, they can trust you. And only because that you drank maybe seven gallons of, of whiskey together in the last uh, decade. Maybe this is the only reason that they trust you. That you were playing bastard basketball when you, when you were stoned together. Because you went to the movies, to the arcades together when you were children. Because of that, they're going to trust you. Yes, it's a crazy reason to trust you. But this is how trust is built. Based on um, experiences that you went through together. That you share time together. So, on you they're going to count. If you're going to give them the same advice that I'm going to give them, to you they're going to believe. And to me, they're not going to listen. Why? Because I look Haredi, because I look religious, so they cannot communicate so well. It's going to be hard for them to listen. Maybe they will. Maybe they won't. There are people that for sure will not. But to you, they will listen. And if you're going to learn something, how to read the Aleph bit, how to say Kiyat Shema, how to pray, to hold the Sidhu, not upside down, how to say Shema Yisrael, without understanding the word. When you say Kiyat Shema, when you say Amen, when you stand, when you sit, how you enter, that you need to kiss the Mezuzah when you enter to, to, to a house. If you're just going to know those small things and just going to share them between the people that are around you, you're going to spread the light. And you're going to become to be that lighthouse and you can shine to people that don't have no direction in the darkness that they are at. And you can be their candle, you can be their torch. Even that you are exactly like you are. If God would want you to be stronger, He would make you stronger. But you don't know how strong you are. <coughs> Even that you are just like you are now. You don't have a clue how strong you are, how powerful you are. You don't have no understanding who you are. You don't know. I was a lifeguard before I done Shuva, and one day I was sitting close to the pool. I'm a lifeguard. And that's it. And I saw three little girls drowning in the middle of the swimming pool. And I jumped into the water, and I swam, and I took them like a, a, a flower, how do you say, is that a, a, a bouquet. A bouquet. I just took three little girls with me outside of the swimming pool, putting them outside. Thank God, three alive. Instead of being three dead. I wasn't keeping Shabbat in those days. I wasn't putting feeling in those days. And I saved three little girls in one day. So you know your importance, you know your greatness, you know who are you, you know what you're about to do, you know what's going to happen tomorrow, who's going to need you. And if you're going to look back, you're going to remember so many situations that you helped people, that you gave them a hand, and you saved lives. And you gave advice, and you helped marriage not to, no, not to break to pieces. And you built houses, and you supported families. And you make people that were dead and depressed and broken and about to kill themselves smile and to find hope in life. And you've done that. And you had half a bottle of whiskey in your head when you've done that. That's how strong you are, not how weak you are. That even when you were drunk, even when you were broken, your soul was shining from inside. And you couldn't care less about your desires and your tiredness and your laziness and your confusions. And you drove like that drunk to that friend to help him in the middle of the night. And you don't know who you are. You don't understand your powers. But we are on a mission. That's exactly who that we are. We're soldiers of the Creator. We're children of the Creator. And we're on a mission. Okay, maybe we forgot it, but He never forgot us. This is why he keep on sending messages and waking up our memory not to forget, not to forget the mission. The mission is to be messengers of the Creator, to reveal his loving kindness to the world, to show there is God, there is a holy nation of Israelis, of Jews, of friends, of brothers, of sisters, they're doing good things. 
We're together. Ishet Reu Yazoru to help her brothers, the friends. Belachiv Yomar Chazak and to strengthen the people, to give them power, to give them hope. That's our mission. You know that's your mission. You feel it inside. You go to work and it's empty for you. But when you met a friend, that's it. That is perfect. You met someone, you can help him. Okay, I'm going to drive you. Yeah, I'm going to drop you off. Oh yeah, I'm going to help you. Yeah, don't worry, I'm going to call him. That's it, you're happy. You find your destiny. That is you. That, those are us. Nothing going to change it. That's what gives you life. To help people. To be close to people. To support people. To give a hand. To give an advice. And if you help in Shlombai, if you have to help someone to find his Shidduch, they're saying if you help three people to find their Shidduch, you have a eternal promise. You have a, a life in the world to come. Because to help someone, it means so much. It means so much. So, if a person now is going to decide, okay, you know what, so I, you want to come closer to the Creator, to be closer to the Creator, it doesn't mean to be more religious. It means to be more who that you are. To be close to God is to be a person of truth. To say the truth. That's to be close to God. Not to lie to yourself. If for you now to be religious and to run and to wake up in the middle of the night, to go to Slicho, to do whatever, and it's bringing sleep and sadness and sorrow and into your life, so wait with that. Maybe it's not your level yet. If it gives you happiness and joy and satisfaction, go for it. It's great. But if you see it's too much, every day minyan, shachrit, mincha, avit, and I have to, and kaddish, and tefillin, and okay, I need to do it but I do, because I want to be blessed there, yeah, and tikkun aklali, and mikveh. It's too much, relax. God is not expecting you to do all of those things yet. When you have the power, do that. Before you have that power, look for the power. Look for the inner happiness. Look for the reason that you're here. Why you're here? What's the purpose of your life? Search for the meaning of your life. Who am I? In what I'm gifted? One person is gifted in playing basketball. <clears throat> if you're going to go and play basketball with your friends, one day you're going to save life in that basketball court. You're going to understand. One day you're going to find one friend that's going to need your advice, and you're going to go and you're going to support him, going to help him. You're going to save his life. You're going to see it. God gave you that desire to go and to run after the ball and to shoot some hoops and to be happy for a reason. Look for that reason. How do you know if it's a Yetzara or not? Like we said before, Yetzara brings you to sadness, to depression, to despair. Yetzara Tov gives you to ha brings you to happiness, gives you a reason to live. Even if today for you to live, what am I doing? I'm just jogging, I'm just running, I'm just driving fast in my car. If it gives you life, it gives you hope, it cheers you up, that's what you need to do. We're not talking about hard drugs that makes you happy. Because in the next day you know how your face looks in the mirror. It's not real happiness. We're looking for real happiness. If you know that something is completing you, that something is building you, something gives you the power to continue, to cross life, to make another step, to build yourself, this is for sure from Hashem, even if it doesn't written in the Shulchan Aruch. Even if it's not halachically 100% said, just written like hey, all of the rabbis going to agree on that. If you feel like today you must go to the beach, you have to see the sunset, you have to go to the forest, you need to make a bonfire with your friends, you have to drink a beer, I'm telling you, that's what Hashem wants. The evidence for that is that Hashem Ibrah, He chosen us when we were much farther than where we are today. He woke us up in parties, He woke us up in the darkness, He woke up us Five years ago, ten years ago, when we were not so close as we are today, even that there is much more to do. But even though that we achieved, God hasn't chosen us because of that. God chosen us because He loves us. And He loved us even then. So it means that He loves you no matter what you do. His love is an eternal love. He just loves you. That's His nature. Asher Shmo Ahava. His name is love. That's what He does in His life. He loves he loves his people, he loves his nation, he loves his creation. He loves everyone. That's who he is. He's the creator, he's father of mercy, father in heaven. He loves us. That's who he is. He just loves us. So you need to feel that. 
and to follow him with all of your heart. Just to feel that love and to know he loves me. And now let's see how I'm going to do something good for him. How I'm going to help him. How I'm going to reveal his light. How I'm going to be a better for a person to make him proud of me. That causes the Shema, that you're doing things for Hashem. And like that you can eat, you can drink, you can go to sleep to make Hashem happy. You can run your life in such a high level of faith that even while you're eating strawberries, you're drinking Pepsi, and you're doing, doing it for Hashem. That's the highest level of them all. That all day long you think, how am I going to make my Father in Heaven happy? How am I going to make Him happy? It's going to make me happy now to buy a bottle of Sprite. That's what I'm going to do. If I'm going to be happy and I'm going to say, Shakon Yabit Baro, Hashem is going to be happy. I'm going to stop in the next gas station and I'm going to buy myself a bottle of Sprite. And I'm going to say, Shakon Yabit Baro. And that's how you live your life with the Creator. Doing everything when you're attached to Him. Taking Him with you to work. Taking Him with you to play baseball, to play basketball, to drive the bike, to drive the jeep, to go to the mountains, to drive. No fear in your eyes. To go with the Creator 24-7. Here you have another thing you're allowed to do in Shabbat. You see? It's not so narrow. You can believe in Hashem in Shabbat. You don't have to forget Hashem in Shabbat. When you go to shul, when you go to learn, when you go to pray, you can forget Hashem. Before you go to learn, you need to say to yourself, okay, I'm going to tie myself to Hashem. I'm going to connect myself to Hashem. I'm going to try to do that in a holy way. Before you go to work, you say to yourself, okay, now I'm going to work. Please, God, let me remember you. Let me do good things, that my income is going to be blessed, that I'm going to remember you when I'm working, when I'm not going to forget you, Hashem. When you're driving, Hashem, thank you for giving me that car. I'm driving, yeah, thank you. Help me, save me, protect me. In every path of your life, in every lane in your life, in every way that you go, remember Him. The way to do it is through a simple conversation, just to talk to Him. How are we going to know that we're in touch? If I'm calling you and you're calling me. If you stopped calling me, we're not in touch anymore. You want to be in touch with Hashem? You need to call Him. And Hashem is close to everyone that calls Him with truth. So just call Him with your truth. What's your truth? Hashem, I want to replace my car. It's only 2015. Look, it's a wreck. I have to find a new car. Okay, tell that to Hashem. If that's your life, if that's your desire, if today that's your decision, if that's your level of truth, if you're even your level of truth is to say to Hashem, Hashem, I'm a liar. That's my truth today, to tell you, Hashem, I'm a liar. I'm the worst liar that's existed. If that's the level of truth that you have, say that to Hashem. If in that day that you feel like you're a liar, you're going to say to Hashem, Hashem, I'm righteous, you're going to lie. You're going to claim I'm righteous, but you're going to lie. If you're going to say I'm a liar, you're going to say the truth. And Hashem's seal is the seal of truth. And He's close to everyone that says the truth. And a liar person cannot stand in front of Hashem. Like the verse is saying, A liar person cannot stand in front of my face. And when you stand, it means you're praying to Hashem. So when you pray and you lie to Hashem, I want to be righteous, I want to be pure, I want to learn all of the Torah. Those are not beautiful prayers. Those are ugly lies. It's not your truth today. You rather to finish half a watermelon a day and one liter of beer a day and to drive and to go and to have nice vacations and to go to Miami and to go to New York and to come to Eretz Israel once in three years. I don't need to say every year. To visit for a week or two. Say the truth. If you're going to say words of truth, they're going to enter to the heart of Hashem. If you're going to lie, even if you're going to try to lie, the most sophisticated, beautiful lie in the world, I want to be righteous, like I said. I want to learn all of the Gemara. I want to be pure. I want to guard my eyes. Those are all lies. You don't really want to guard your eyes. To guard your eyes means to close your eyes. Can you guard your eyes without closing them? Do you want to live like that? No way. So you don't want to guard your eyes. So don't lie. Don't say those lies to I want to guard my eyes. Don't say you don't. Why do you lie? No, I do. don't lie. You don't. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. 
<laughs> Only few righteous people, few huge righteous people really don't want to look at this world at all. Only few. We don't know those righteous people, is it? Huge righteous people, maybe. Us, let's talk to Hashem with truth. Let's tell him, Hashem, I need your help. Hashem, I need more panasa. Hashem, I want to buy a bigger house. Hashem, I want me and my wife to be able to go for, for a vacation every three months, not every six months. Please, Hashem. Please, please, please. That's what I want. Please, Hashem. Please help us. Please, I want a better car. I want a better car for my wife. Please, Hashem. We want a dog. You know, Hashem, we want a dog. We decided, me and my wife, find us a good dog, a nice, good pet. That's what we want. Say the truth. Live your life with Hashem. Stop denying it. No, Hashem is in the synagogue. No, Hashem is not in this bad Knesset only. Hashem is with you. When you stop in a kiosk, in a, in, a, in, a, in a grocery store, you want to buy Pepsi, Hashem is there. Hashem is in front of you on the counter. Hashem is with you. In the place that your nose finished, that's where Hashem starts. Hashem is with you in front. You should know in front who you're standing. You open your eyes, Hashem is there. Before of Natilat Yadayim, Hashem is with you. Before of washing your hands, Hashem is with you. Hashem is with you when you're alive, when you exist, Hashem is with you. So we need to connect ourselves to Him. And like we said, the simple way to do it is just to talk to Him. To be in touch with Him, it means to talk to Him. And to tell Him, help me to progress, help me to learn more Torah. Help me to be happy to wake up in the morning and to go to shul. Help me to be happy to go to the mikveh. Not to be disgusted from all of those hairs of men over there. Help me, please, Creator. Please, Father in Heaven. Help me. Help me to do good things in my life. Help me to be generous, to be able to give charity. That I won't feel like I lost my life every dollar that I'm going to give to some person that needs my help. Please help me. That I won't be cheap, not on myself, not on my wife, not on my children, not on the community, not on our friends, not on, on Am Israel. Please, let me be generous. Let me feel good giving money, spending money, letting other people live also. Please. When you're going to talk like that to the Creator, you're going to open a way of communication that's based on trust and truth. And then you will be able to talk on everything. You're going to be able to find yourself and to become to be who that you are. To change yourself and to be religious, it, it's not the answer. You can be a sad, depressed, broken, Haredi person, it doesn't mean you achieved anything in life. If you're gonna be a happy person that feels complete with himself, that know what he's doing, that got a purpose, and doing only good, you achieve a big thing in your life. Be who that you are. That's how you're gonna find the Creator. Thank you very much. I have a question. Go ahead. Yes. So Monday night, I heard you at the shul, and it was the very first time I actually sat and listened to a rabbi tell his story. Oh yeah. Ever. ever in my life. Um, okay. He's a Cohen too. I'm a Cohen, and um, I went to the American school. Regardless, so I couldn't. Really, it's not, I've been to Temple many times, but I didn't comprehend because I'm always going to the Yemenite temples. Believe it or not, I'm Yemenite. So, and with the Moroccan temples, where they speak very fast Hebrew. It's almost like listening to a soccer game. I can't understand anything besides gold. So I finally listened to you, and I understood what you're saying. It seems to me that you're all, all the teachings are pretty much a... It's like you're conveying a message of how to deal, cope with life's hurdles, and make sure that you understand they're forever going to come. Just be happy about them so you don't stress out. Is that pretty much the premise of all the teachings just you conveyed in different messages, in different ways? Because everyone has their own way of teaching the same what I think the Torah teaches, and it's pretty much a, it's peace of mind. What that I'm trying to share is from my life experience, because for me, all of that issue of being religious is very foreign. Mm -hmm. I'm not coming from a religion house, no, not, nothing. We never kept Shabbat, we're not eating kosher. Very, very far from, from tradition. Myself as well. I, and, and when I went to look for myself and I realized that to become more and more closer and closer to Judaism and then give me more answers and going to be better for me, going to be good for me, I found myself struggling with the system and with the Haredi world and with all the rule system and all the halachot and obligations. And for me, it was more of a constriction than, than a salvation. So it, it bothered me. It's like, 
I saw a huge view of, 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 my, of my goal, of my future, but when I came closer to that, I realized it's a picture, it's a brick wall. I, I can't come in. I, I can't go to that, to that place at all. And so I, I, for my life, it's, I, I never give up. And I decided to, to, to break that wall and to make it through. So I see that that is the main thing that is required for people to know how to deal with their own life journey, because it's not uh, a, a mathematic drill of, 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 of just, you know, one plus one is two, and that's it, you made it, you know, you were secular, now if you're going to be religious, then you, you have, no. It's simple, because if you didn't have faith, and you're going to have faith, great, you made it, but really to achieve faith, really to be a believer, really to feel that you're close to God, that you trust God, that you love God, that you feel that He loves you, that you feel that, that you're like brothers, like Or Chaim Kadosh said, that my brother is Him, that He calls us brothers. You and Him are brothers. It's crazy, but, but, but it's written. So, to understand that and to live like that, it's, it's, it's a journey, really, to, to learn. Like, you, you want to be a lawyer, it's going to take you four years in college to be a doctor, I'm talking Israeli way. It's going to take you seven years to become a doctor in Eretz Israel. So it's a process. So to be a real believer, it's written Sadiq Katamar Ifrach. It's like a palm tree. It takes him years until you become to be righteous. Years is growing. You know how tall you need to be, how high you need to be to be righteous. You need to climb huge levels. So in that path, in that way, you're going to go through a lot. We're all going to go through a lot. So we need to learn how to deal with that. So I'm trying to give practical advice of how not to to be afraid from the fear, how not to go to sadness from the from the frustration, yeah. from, from the just to find more source of happiness and, and inspiration in our individual life, and, and, and to understand that, that that is the path to live, and not only the result. The verse is saying, results are after death. We don't want the results. We want the path. We didn't gonna enjoy the trip. The ride is part of the trip. It's part of it. Need to enjoy the, the ride. That's part of, of the vacation of, of life. Maybe so. I appreciate it. In my, in my field, we call it process. Something that me and my friends preach all the time, and it's uh, respectful. Like, okay. Thanks for you. Like, uh, you see that you, know, you came yesterday to a class, and today you found yourself in the second class. If you're going to come tomorrow, so. <laughs> 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 <laughs>